I got to play on the Sabbath show one time. They were on Ozfest and Pantera was on it. And um, I went out and I got the, the pleasure to sit behind Mike Borden playing with Ozzy and Sabbath for six shows before my makeup show because Mike had to go and fly back to Faith No More. <laughs> they were starting their tour and Ozzy had blown his voice and missed a show and they needed a drummer for that makeup show. That's how I got Sabbath. So when I was out there in the Ozfest and not only do I get to watch fucking Mike Borden from two feet, like his, I was like his drum tech every night. It was insane. But, and then Vinnie Paul during Sabbath takes some chick underneath um, Borden's riser. <laughs> and he had checked, asked Mike Borden, you know, can I, and Mike's like, go ahead. on stage, Mike's like, go ahead, man. And he fucked, they crawl under his, and Vinnie bangs his chick underneath his riser while Black Sabbath's on stage. So that's <laughs> fucking, that's a brick wall right there, baby. Hey, welcome to another episode of 2020. My name is Corey Peza. I'm here as always with the, uh, the what, I don't even know what we're calling ourselves now. The, the something, some group the of cohorts, people. The, the, the cohorts. Part, no, hard, how about, the I, I, I want a new one. Why don't we call ourselves the triumvirate? I already came up with that one. No, I know. I'm thing. saying we're, I'm bringing it back. <laughs> okay, the triumvirate. Uh, Betty go. Goodman and Siobhan Cronin. How's it going, guys? Hey, <laughs> feeling, a great episode Feeling a little sleepy. Today. Feeling a little burnt out. I feel yeah, like just... the womp womps coming from the nitrous after talking to David Aberzies and, and Shannon for two hours and change, man. Holy it's, fuck. Yeah, like I, a double whammy episode. Yeah. Like, what I, an incredible thing to observe. We cannot even begin to explain. Just know that you have to watch this episode. If you're listening, make sure at some point you go back and watch it because it's a very visual well, episode. Well, you have to listen to the video. We, we got to show them the video of them, of, of David ser serving listen Shannon. Listen to the video. <laughs> yeah. I will put it in. I will put it in right before the intro to the show, so everyone can check that out. Which is going to happen right now. Just let's get right into it. The craziest show we've had so far, definitely, with Shannon Larkin of Godsmack and David Aberziz of Pro as Jam a co-host, by the way, yes. as our co-host, getting twenty twenty because David agreed. See you soon, Shannon. Shannon Larkin. Hello, sir. It's Dave Aberziz. Why don't you come join us this Sunday? Get 2020 again with me. We'll have a chit chat. We get to talk to you. Last time I talked to you, let's see, 1980, you were wearing a boa constrictor around your neck, and uh, the the there was like a no deposit, no return. I think was the big song, Rothschild USA. <laughs> Been a while. Hopefully, we'll see you on Sunday. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Benny Goodman, and you're here at an extra, extra special episode of 2020. Uh, Very exciting. I'm here with my cohorts in crime, uh, Siobhan Cronin. Hi, everyone. I'm excited for this Corey one. Corey Peza. Cheers. And for the first time ever, we have an honorary host, Mr. Shannon Larkin of Godsmack and the Apocalypse Blues Revival. Welcome. Woo! And then... <laughs> A guest that I know the internet has requested back, especially considering I talk over him endlessly and they want to know You're more gonna about him You're going to get your third or fourth chance here. <laughs> David Aberzies <laughs> from Pearl Jam, from the International Motherfuckers, from Zootopia, and also just a philosopher in life. Hi, Dave. Our dear friend, yeah. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to when my beanie starts to rise up. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> It's all about the accessories today. We've got all sorts of hats and additions to our show. <laughs> so let's jump right into the absolute insanity. So people saw a video ahead of time of David sort of serving Shannon after he heard that Shannon was like, I'll come on as a co-host. And he reminded the world that at some point you guys crossed paths and Shannon was wearing a boa constrictor uh, in his band, Wrathchild America. Could you please tell us what, what was going on, David? I think I think the band was just called Wrathchild at the time, or whatever. Not, yes, you guys yes. Have to, to it or whatever. No, it was a killer band. You kidding me? Um, it was at a club called On the Rocks in Dallas, yeah. and Shen came in. Uh, I got there early because I wanted to see the sound check because everyone was telling me this fucking killer drummer. 
Joey Ellis, this player I was in the band with. Oh, you got to see this drummer, man. He's just amazing. So uh, I showed up early, and, and Shannon came in with a <laughs> – and snakes freaked me out. I'm just going to be honest. He came <laughs> in with a sister around his neck, and I thought, oh, shit. How am I going to approach this guy <laughs> and say hello? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I toured with that thing, man. I toured with my snake back then. Where did your snake go at night? Like, how did that work? I, I when, had it in a pillowcase that I slept in bed with it, you know? Yeah. I remember you put it in the pillowcase, and that's when I went up to you and said hello. <laughs> wow. That's so funny, man, because I totally remember on the rocks, and I remember playing that. That Those were good days, you know? That, that was yeah. just a – so are you from there, Dave? <laughs> Dallas? I, I made most of my mistakes in Dallas, so I say I'm raised there, but I'm from Connecticut. So, <laughs> ah, nice. Uh, it was man, that was a great show, and you you did not fail to impress me. It was just ever since then I've, I've always you know I get on YouTube every now and again. I'll pop in your name and see what the hell you're up to. I was surprised about Candlebox when I heard about that. Yeah, you know that was something that I wasn't in the band, and you know uh, I was in this punk band named Amen. And our manager managed Candlebox. So that's that's how that all went down. And I'd never met Kevin or any of the guys, you know. But, man, when we toured and Pete Klett was just, you know, let loose for the first time. And he was kind of, you know, finding that side of him. And, boy, did we have fun. It was, it was really like old school debauchery and just we just fucked shit up as rad. Well, I, <laughs> I went one at one point I met with Kevin. He had asked me if I would consider joining the band and we met at a coffee shop and it was, um, it was kind of a dark day and it was raining out and we met and he was wearing these big old sunglasses and he was, <laughs> it was, he, it was the most rock star I've ever, I'd ever met. And I, you know, and, and I mean, hung out with Axel, you know, but Kevin topped it. <laughs> Somehow he topped wow. it at that. That yeah, it's so shop. funny, man. You say that whenever I talk to Kevin, um, whenever I talk to him, I say, hey, my favorite rock star. He's right my on. favorite rock star. And because once yeah. you know, he's just he's a rock star, but he's just so normal and rad. Oh. I love that guy. I really do. And he he has his own merch company now, too, that he does, you know, for for bands like my Apocalypse Blues thing where you don't have money or whatever. And because, yeah. he does, you know, you don't have to order so much so many of them and he he gives really good deal for bands because the dude doesn't need money you know what i mean That's and so good. he's one of those musicians that are he's super like still doing it just for music you know which says something you know yeah sure does especially now so what mm -hmm. about you Shen? Are, are you doing it just for music yeah well i'm lucky dave um i got this band godsmack you know with this dude sully arna who's a yeah. rock genius, I think. And, you know, we, it's been, geez, 18 years now. And like, we've just, you know, we're just like this band, you know, like we never like jumped up to stadiums like y'all or whatever, but we, you know, keep us a steady fan base yeah. and been successful, you know? And so yeah. since, since that, and it's his vision, you know, he's the dude and man, the main songwriter. And, you know, he has the, whole vision of what he wants this record to sound like and the next record and blah, blah, blah. And so it, it, you know, affords me to be able to do the side thing just for music. And I don't have any pressure of, you know what I mean? Like having to, I basically, I mean, I play for Sully, you know, in Godsmack, you know, like, and he's a, by the way, an excellent fucking drummer. Yeah, that, I've seen it. And, and when we, when I first met him, man, it was back in, Rathchild and it, we were playing the attic in North Carolina. Remember the attic? Everybody I, I played there from the eighties. Cause it was just the place in Carolinas. But, uh, and so he came there with Reed from COC Remember Reed Mullen and, uh, and, and Reed told Sully like, dude, you know, well, their friend Todd had said, you got to see this guy fucking Shannon or whatever. And Sully ended up come back to my room at night. I don't remember if I have my snake, but it was back in those days, man. And we, <laughs> it was party time, man. And, and I swear to you, man, we, we, we exchanged numbers and we were just friends for like, you know, literally 16 years before he asked me to join his band, you know, which I turned down and uh, I had just signed a, a deal with this punk band, amen. And so he's like, dude, man, you know, we got all the labels and blah, blah, blah. And we're selling out the hammer jacks or whatever it was. And, um, 
And I'm like, I can't do it, man. You know, and then their record came out, sells 5 million copies or whatever. But then luckily, you know, um, Tommy Stewart, the first drummer on the first two records, just, I guess, you know, they just didn't get along. And I got the call because of my bro. But, um, man, I forget why I was on myself. That's, that's he was asking nice. if you're in it for the music. Are you in it for yeah. the music, Shannon? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are so you? That, so that <laughs> Are whole, you? You know it, Benny. But so that whole thing, Dave, was like a f getting Godsmack, you know, and having, you know, because Bradshaw was my thing, too. You know, like, at, like that was my band. And, you know, I started as a kid, all this shit. But and so joining somebody else's band. And that has all this vision, all this creativity. It's all he has. Like, I can't, all my ideas are not like commercial and they're, you know, very eclectic, you know. And so, and I can't express myself through that. So basically in Godsmack, man, I, I try and just, I focus on the drums and I'm drummer's drummer, man. I, I love the drums still this day and the sounds and the tuning and everything I do in the studio. But man, he's, you know, on top of every beat and fill and what symbol I'm hitting everything, man. He's very, you know, he, cause he has a vision, he knows what he wants. So if I hadn't been blessed with like, you know, to be able to be successful and be able to do my own music, then I'd be living in a fucking one bedroom apartment and do my own music anyway. But I got lucky. <laughs> yeah. I got lucky and got high with fucking Sully Erna 25 years ago. Would you, and, would, you, you know. would you say that Sully's kind of like your Frank Zappa and you're like Vinnie Kaliuta in this case, where he's like, you're just like <laughs> completing his vision in his head. And it doesn't matter, Shannon. He I mean, he loves you, but he doesn't. He doesn't care. You're just making the music in his head. But go take the money and go play in the Apocalypse Blues revival, right? And now you make genius. And when, and when well, Sully's gone, you'll be part of the biggest thing ever. The thing is, like Dave can tell you, is like, even if he tells me, hey, I wanted to go, ooh, bop, ooh, ooh, bop, you know, the way I go, ooh, bop, ooh, ooh, bop, isn't going to be exactly like the other guy. It's just like guitar players, you know, like any, anybody can like learn fucking eruption exactly like it, but it's not going to sound like A. Van Halen playing it because of his fingers. And you can play, mm -hmm. be playing on the same fucking guitar through the same fucking amp, the same effects and everything, but Ed's fingers sound different than your fingers and my fingers, you know? Just like, you know, Dave, you know what I'm saying, Dave? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, <laughs> man, I'm just going to do it again. I did it in, back in the 1980s. I'm going to do it again. Man, you were, <laughs> blew my mind back then. You played your ass off. It was great. Yeah. And it sounded, in that little club, it sounded amazing. Your drums were thunder. <laughs> and I was so inspired. I used to, you know, go to concerts just to see drummers and then I just want to play, you know, it was, there was, I never grew up with that feeling of, uh, you know, like, Oh, that guy just, you know, makes me want to quit or anything like that. It, was, it always drove me. And you uh -huh. were one of the drummers that drove me. It was like, man, I gotta, I gotta get back to learning how to catch that thing and twirl this other one. And <laughs> I tell you who did that you were, to me was when, when I first saw King's X man back in those eighties and that Jerry Gaskell, yeah. guy, he changed me, man. Oh, man. I was like, I got to go practice, boy. That was just amazing, too. But uh, I never got to see you play back then, man. Man, we took King's X out. Uh, Pearl Jam did for three months, I think it was. Um, and it was amazing. Actually, you know, Jerry came up and, and we, we played WMA once live. And he came up and played with me. And it was just, I was just beaming. You know, it was like him and Nico came up one day and, and did a jam on porch with me. And it was like, man. <laughs> Love That's that stuff. Cool. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, I did that. Be a Chad Smith's kick drum one time. I laid under his floor toms and played the. Oh, I love this story. <laughs> with a stick because his pedal broke. Man, those, those times are just the best. And you're, you're right up there, you know, top five, top five, just like. Oh, wow. Man. I tell you this about Chad Smith. Uh, I think he's the greatest living rock drummer <laughs> i mean i'll say that out loud yeah. and uh, and and i'm i have such stars in my eyes for chad smith and uh, i always have and i'll tell you um one time i had this thing on the side another side thing i'm always doing some side thing and uh it was called another animal right and and so i had wit crane singing my singer from ugly kid joe and he and i love that guy so anyway, I do the side thing. We're in uh, 
we're in LA at those, uh, the NAM show, right? And they booked us this show and it was Chad Smith on drums, Glenn Hughes on the bass and vocals. Oh my and, God. Uh, I, uh, I'm at the, the sound check thing or whatever. And we, 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 we did a sound check. Of course, we were opening for, you know, whatever the super group was called. I think Paul Gilbert was on guitar. It was just super group. And they were just jamming like, fuck, you know, covers and obviously song from their great super groups. And uh, so I were standing there talking, blah, 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 and, and whatever. There's a bunch of people around this NAMM show, but it's sound check. So, and all of a sudden the drums start playing a beat in the background. And just from the sound of the snare, I, I was like, that's Chad Smith. And I turned around, it was Chad Smith. Wow, that's and, incredible. And, you know, yeah, just, but, yeah. you know, there's not many drummers that just can, can, it's like when Eddie Van Halen played guitar or whatever, you know. I'll you, give you a you, drummer I saw that's like that, who blew my mind. I would never thought, Kenny Arnoff. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I, I met that guy and he walks in with the longest fucking scarf you've ever seen. He's only like five foot one. He's got his sunglasses that are like this big. And he went, dude, he played with Doug Pinnock from King's X and Satch for the Experience Hendrix thing. He walks on stage and he's just fucking slamming shit, but he's smiling like Guy Smiley and he's just fucking all spinal tapped out and it's Satch playing Hendrix and then Doug Pinnock singing. And playing bass and I, I thought that? to myself dude the whole drum riser was shaking i mean he hits like so hard i can't believe his drums didn't actually break and he, he that, was the hardest hitter guy i've ever seen was mike borden oh yeah faith no more dude that yeah. dude that dude and he's a sweetheart too. i love him too Puff, but, that people, dude, right? so, mike borden hits the drums like he's like they owe him money and you know I, <laughs> I got to know Mike, um, got to visit him and his, his lovely wife uh, in San Francisco, and uh, he invited me to his house, and we sat, and, and, and I was just blown away because I expected him to be <laughs> the, the type of guy that played the drums the way he plays the drums, and that's when I realized that, wow, you know, I, you know really, it, <laughs> it was like, it's like a bipolar thing. He's so powerful behind the kit, and he's such, uh, like, just low-key really sweet nice guy genuinely nice guy um he, yeah it blew my mind it just it was such a treat and and you were talking about the nam show i was talking to kenny one i hadn't been to the nam show in many years i kind of disappeared for a while when i came back uh, first person i ran into was kenny and he was like hey you know he's really over the top and, and fun and he's talking to me and then chad came up and tackled me to the ground <laughs> <laughs> I love the fraternity we're in, Shannon. I just do, man. I love it. Absolutely. Oh, man. Well, I'll tell you a, a Mike Borden story. Um, so I was in uh, wherever. I think it was uh, Australia, let's say. And, um, and Mike Borden was, it was Faith No More somewhere. God damn it. I'm so drunk. <laughs> But anyway, so anyway, so I'm somewhere in the world, right? And I get the opportunity <laughs> for, for this legend guy who I'd never met. Or well, I met him very briefly one time, just shook his hand. And most time when I meet Rockstar, I can't fucking speak because I'm so blown away. So I'm that guy. I just shut up and shake their hand. I hope they're nice. But um, and so so Mike Borden on a night off, my my band, it was Godsmack. Fuck my band. Uh, and so <laughs> I, yeah, I was new to the band, so whatever. We were there. It was our first time we went to Australia or whatever. And and Faith and More was headlining the whole festival thing. So, you know, they're king fucking ding -a down there everywhere. And so fucking Borden on a night off, we we were doing to make money because we're, you know, we're on we're like the third band on the stage down there or whatever. So we were playing on our nights off at the clubs, you know, that you know, to try and spread our thing in Australia, whatever. And Borden takes it on himself to come out and, and fucking see us alone, by the way. And he comes up and somehow he comes up to the back of the backstage door. We let him in. I'm like, oh my God, my fucking board, right? So anyway, we get to talk and I'm taking pictures. He's I'm hugging him. I'm touching him, trying to just, you know, s steal some of his good energy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, can I just touch you, dude? And uh <laughs> fucking next thing you know. Oh, I got great pictures of he's holding me like a koala bear or some shit. It was like, I was like, Jesus, I'm in Australia, fucking meeting Mike Borden, Jesus. So, 
Um, and so anyway, so he goes, what kind of snare are you using? This is one of those moments, Dave, that you go, whoa. Because like, you know, and, and I have another one out there you do. But anyway, he's like, what kind of snare are you using? I'm like, oh, I'm using the Mike Borden fucking signature. I'm like, I'm using your fucking snare, dude, right? He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, dude. And he goes, he goes, and all serious, he's like, listen, Shannon, if, if, have you broken it? And I go, we ain't broken it. No, I haven't broken it. And he goes, well, I go, what do you mean broken it? The, he goes, the shell. And now <laughs> Mike Gordon snare, it's like a fucking, you know, it's, it's a thick, it's like a black beauty or so. It's a heavy brass snare, right? And it's nickel, it's black coated and all this shit. Anyway, it's a heavy, it weighs fucking 30 pounds. And he's like, have you broken the shell yet? I'm like, no. He goes, listen. I can have you a, a, a special one made. He goes, I get my, my, my made special. He goes, I can have you special one made that are a lot thicker. And I'm like, dude, you are fucking crazy. How do you break it? I've never in my life, have you, I mean, broken a shell? from? Yeah. I, mean, I, I, mean, the- does. I weigh 105 yeah. pounds, but. <laughs> <laughs> I got meaty elbows, man. <laughs> Big wrists. <laughs> I chip beefy elbows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it started out as, as an 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and it ended up as just that's that's when I went down to that 12, uh, or, yeah, 12, no, 16, 18. It was 12, 16, 18 because the other toms broke off the mounts. But I was playing with DC 10 then. Remember those sticks? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking baseball bats. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Well, that's one th- but that's one thing, David, I can totally say unequivocally about you is every single time I hear you send me a drum track or even just hear your drums on any recording and I watch the international motherfuckers, I watch a whole performance of you guys and you guys are first off sick, but you could tell it's you because you hit the drums like you say Puffy hits the drums. First off, doesn't Puffy play his uh, hi-hat on the right so he can hit it harder yeah i'm pretty sure that he does that and when you play david i swear to god like it just and you play first off in big room so you can hear the reverb but it literally sounds like gunshots it's I, I, yeah, you know, no every stadiums, time you know, your drums sound fucking huge when you play those stadiums but even oh, yeah. the clubs even the clubs the, it, go watch the international motherfuckers with steve salas stevie salas 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 holy Sal- shit Sal- holy Bozio, shit dude. Bozio. <laughs> Bozio, Bo- yeah, I don't know which one. Beer- I'm, they're missing people. I don't want to say Bozio because you don't want to say like Bozo or whatever. I've always said Bozio, but then I felt like I heard, I don't know if it was Steve said Bozio, or maybe he was just copying me to be nice. I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. I don't think anybody does it. Because how about when like Carmen Apice and Vinny Apice and they yeah. fucking, and they came yeah. up with that? Like the real name, who knows which way is the right way? FSA versus FPs, yeah. They said to each other, look, so we could separate our fucking vibes, you know, because you're famous over here and whatever, Rod Stewart, and you're over here and fucking Eric Clapton or whatever. I'll be a piece, you be apathy. And they said, all right, but that's true. Those brothers. And uh, I don't okay, think- how, about, how about though, you go the wrong way. How about the shank nurse? You can't play a flying V. Well, I'm in UFO. I had played a flying V before, but no, now you're in the Scorpions. You can't take my flying V. And then they're not yeah. friends anymore. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> because of a flying V, Shannon, all because of a flying fucking V. But Shanker <laughs> wins. Shanker wins Michael Shanker for best guitarist in Scorpions. Hold on, listen, bro. Above everything that I do, okay? I want you to know. In my studio, I keep a picture of Michael because oh. he, he watches me. At, it's signed. It's signed for stuff. But he watches me at all times because I can't make decisions in good and in, in good comfort knowing that Michael doesn't agree with me. And I just look over and he, he tells me, <laughs> look at that face. He tells me every time. Man, uh, just a year before or maybe it was two years, three years ago. But Michael Schenker went out on tour and he had uh the first singer, which I can't remember his name, but from the greatest two Shanker records. But then he had Graham Bonnet and then he had the new singer, you know, who I haven't heard, but I heard him that night. And then, but it came out and it was called, uh, cause Michael Shanker came out and he's so German and he announced it. He like said, welcome to the Michael Shanker attack or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so funny, but then they opened my fucking right they were into the arena first song. And he fucking, and I was standing like, you know, 30 feet away. It was our club, you know, but the great grand bonnet, dude, when you, when, when he sang, even at his age, it's like three years ago, uh, you could hear, you know, those dudes, you can hear them 
like when you're standing over the PA, like you can you can hear him from the stage, kind of from oh, the yeah. fourth row. He's that fucking guy. All of, all five foot five or whatever, but man, yeah. Uh, Pinnick, boy, my, monitor, my monitor rig was um, Dave Rapp put a DB meter on my head, and it was 124 DB snare. Jesus Christ! Oh, oh no. my gosh! No. <laughs> Like here you have a 747 jet airline and yeah. then you have David Abruzzese, ladies and gentlemen, with the bell brass. But Doug Pinnock got up and sang, uh, sang with us. Um, and I could hear him. I could hear like when he pulled the mic away, I could, I could hear his voice over my, over my drum. Unbelievable. That's crazy. He is crazy. fucking powerful and beautiful. Yeah, a great and one and a great guy, really great, humble, just sweetheart. And Blew dude, do you know? Oh, like, I think I think he just turned seventy, and the dude looks like he's fucking forty. I look <laughs> older than him. I, 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 if I get near the light, <laughs> I'm you, man. This is fucking shit, man. You know well, shit. He's, okay, so in a good way for him, he looks he's he's ageless, but it's also like a guy like Tommy Aldrich. You go see Tommy Aldrich now, he looked the same when he was in the Blizzard of Oz as he does right now, which is not necessarily a good thing, but it's consistent. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Rogers is, is by the way and just so you know I, I, I wanted to ask you guys can we throw out a drummer here and there so what do you guys think I, I, I want your opinion as consummate amazing drummers Tommy Aldridge he's one of my favorites let's start with him what do you think Shannon let me just say fucking Pat Travers live album snort whiskey drinking cocaine that just that backwards quad Philly does and that makes him top five you know Fucking rock drumming. Damn. Yeah. I saw him play with Ted Nugent, man. And it was what? Ted Nugent, Rudy Sar Rudy Sarzo, and and Tommy Aldridge. Wow. And amazing. And he opened for Kiss. That's the Blizzard of Oz band with Net Ted Nugent. Well, kinda, yeah. Right. Uh, uh, the real oh, Blizzard no. band was Lee Kersley. And Bob Daisley. I know, but Sharon erased them from history. So let's just leave it there. John G Arden. <laughs> The, and then Mike yeah, Borden came in and re-recorded it. Don't you know that that's the real album? It's Mike Borden and Robert Trujillo. I asked Mike about that, and he was like, "Dude, you know, you think I wanted to really do that? You know, in a classic or whatever? But I'm in the band and fucking, so I go, oh, whatever." Everybody thought the same thing, like, "Why?" And it was all, you know, sharing money thing, you know, about her father well, was Don Arden. I know, I know, and I love Sharon Osbourne, by the way. Hi, Sharon. She's, I play not, she's not listening to this <laughs> she might though greg works never on her know. show was it the talk never know, my, my buddy's my yeah. buddy produces her you show might have fucking cyber spies out there yeah. every time. the word sharing or osborne's mention she needs to fucking have her spies tell her can she make a dime on that <laughs> she has a deal with alexa I'll tell, I'll tell you what man so you know, I played with Sab at that one show right and um at the end of it i was very adamant i said look all i want sharon is just the video there was a five fucking camera crew and she had told me that she has every show that ozzy ever did since he left black sabbath in a vault she keeps every show she goes yeah. i will i go i don't care when you know and so for the next once a year for the next four years which was as long as i got christmas cards from the osbournes after i played with them uh four years and then so after that i kind of just quit reaching out and bugging her for it but so there's somewhere there's film of me playing with geezer tony and ozzy at one wow. show one show with one with one rehearsal without ozzy of course and oh, so yeah, no. i mean I felt, I felt like i played well but anyway so sharon when when you're when your cyber nazis see this just <laughs> fucking send me that tape. dude you gotta pull a lead curse like <laughs> just tell them you're dying on your deathbed and tell them you want your <laughs> platinum records dude and they'll send them to you ask lee <laughs> I don't know. I All know right, that. hold on. Tommy Aldridge, David Abrazese. What do you think about Tommy? I always thought he hit harder. And then I saw some old video of him, and he used to hit really hard. But no, Tommy's always impressed me. And that, that would be the thing. I'd go back to that Pat Travers. I was a huge Pat, Pat Travers fan, still am. But um, yeah, that record, it was it, one of the few uh, times that I couldn't visualize what a drummer was doing. Cause, you know, that's how I learned was sitting in my teenage bedroom with my eyes closed and the headphones on, you know, picking it apart and his stuff. I just, I couldn't wrap my head around it. 
But yeah, yeah, it was you know when in the song, and I'm not saying it because the line or whatever. When it goes, when he says, "I got so much cocaine that I can't be found," whatever that fill behind that line, that that he starts with the the feet, then to the tom snare, so blap out, blap out. The up fucking quad, man. I couldn't figure it either, dude. I was like, what the fuck? Pat <laughs> Travers had figured it out. That's for sure. I've, I've been looking for it. They don't get it. <laughs> All right. Next on the list, Cozy Powell. Uh, what do you think, David? Michael Schenker group. Cozy wow. was the uh, just. I mean, We're actually covering with- Gates to Babylon right now, so we played on was cozy playing on it you know he, he's like like chad like so many drummers that have this feel that's that's theirs and they own it cozy cozy did that I, I the first time i really was impressed by him was that first uh first robert plant solo record oh what was the name of the song it was like the only put it in and it was like just a, and cozy was playing drum it was just incredible blew my mind but yeah, no, Cozy's always been one of my favorites. And, and I, I didn't see this video on YouTube of him. With, did you see the drum battle with him and this little kid? Seen that, Benny? Maybe I I, seen I'm that. actually pretty sure that I have seen it at, at one point in time. It's fucking rad. Just, just the, you know, yeah, just a sweetheart of, of a guy. You know, it's like I, he, when he plays his, his, uh, his personality behind the kit, was always just so, you know, it was very stern and very powerful. Yeah. And then when when seeing him doing this drum battle with this like 12 year old kid on like BBC or some something like that, um, you just saw you saw that he had that same intensity, but there was a, a, a little bit of cheekiness to it that kind of endeared me to him, uh, you know, as a person. I wish I could have met him, um, but I, I definitely feel like I, I know a good part of him just from his work. But yeah, just, yeah, hats off. Uh, hands up the great cozy pal monster the great cozy pal rest in peace <laughs> <laughs> who's next who's next let's talk more drummers oh, okay. all, all right dude uh, i'm gonna tell you a guy that totally blew my mind that i i'm ashamed that i had no idea so when the covid shit first happened i went back to my records and i started playing stuff i hadn't listened to in a long time carl palmer carl palmer asia Yes, I, I couldn't comment because I don't really listen to ELP and never did or whatever. But you know what? He must be legendary for something. Dude, I'm telling you, I think it was like the second. All right, we're going we're gonna to skip past Carl Palmer. Right? I, I, have, I have plenty. Of, okay, a guy that scares me now that I literally think to myself, if he was, anyone was going to win America Ninja Warrior and they play drums, it's got to be Virgil Donati. What do you guys think of that fucking crazy dude? Hold on. Virgil the not one American Ninja. No, I'm saying as a drummer, <laughs> as oh, a drummer, he like he's literally like oh, I've never okay. seen more accurate. Fucking, Holy I shit! He won the show or whatever. I no, like, I'm oh, saying for yeah. drums. I'd rather, like, I'd rather win that show than play on the fucking Virgil Donati's new album. I don't know. Damn. You know, it's Virgil's Virgil's style of playing. Um, you know that. I guess, you know, drumming, a, a lot of us are, are self-taught and, and we're influenced so much by what's happening as we're growing up and getting inspired. And and I, I'm kind of glad I missed the Virgil train because it was so epic that it would have tested my resolve. But um, there's so many young drummers that, you know, grew up influenced by him that, that, that he's really created this subgenre of next level playing. For, for just players, for kids like me who had headphones on and, you know, their eyes closed and just went to clubs and saw drummers like Shannon and, and went home and tried to steal everything cool that they did. <laughs> Virgil is like, he's one of those guys that is, has introduced, I mean, yeah, he does things that, that on a kit that just, it's like you just go, okay, it's not, you know, somebody can do that. I only thought machines were, were, were capable of that. Yeah, he pulls it off. Unbelievable. I got a comment on how well that, that was said by Dave. Especially, I'm glad that I didn't discover him until later because he would have tested my resolve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, Amazing. Was, that was fucking genius, man. I got to remember that. Anyway, great answer. All right. <laughs> What's the next question? <laughs> that was rad. So I want to hear what drummers you guys are paying attention to right now. 
Like, uh, you know, if anyone on tour that you've toured with recently or, oh, well, or you just kind of well, let's across. ask what I'm going to ask a very selfish question. How about Paul Lorenzo that you heard on Lost Symphony? You were saying that before we got on, but this we're, we're actually sponsored. Yeah. And in fact, David played on Chapter Two, which you listened yeah. to. So I'm sort of curious. What did you think of the drumming on those records? I thought that it was amazing that that that's like I said, that that's some very progressive symphonic for sure the, the name of the band it is it is symphonic metal like and i mean the guitar again the guitar players uh, i don't even know <laughs> Next what to level. say but, yeah <laughs> i mean it's, it's hard for me to, to ever have heard things that fast you know what i mean i mean that that's virtuosity right there but the drummer that paul guy wow i mean you know it's it's just i i could probably maybe have done it as a youngster <laughs> but now i couldn't <laughs> that play that shit man you know Dude, what I mean? he, he's he's very <laughs> close to your age it'd take me like fucking six months to, of rehearsing two hours a day to get back up to that fucking speed yeah, true, yeah. true story on true story about this paul did not rehearse one of those songs he came in every single time smoked weed drank dunkin donuts listened no. to the song and then played to it and then fucking Are left and fucking forgot about it me? well he's then he's one of those people that he's an asshole total I, asshole i i i envy that not only not because i don't enjoy practicing and working on my drums or whatever but just because it would leave it would free up so much more time to do other shit <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I was, I, you know when I first when you sent me the stuff that um, yeah before you sent me the track to play on when we were talking about it um, you sent me some stuff and I was like oh man you know that that's like ugh. I'm thinking oh this is gonna hurt <laughs> it's all on a four piece Rogers 60s holiday kit, kit dude with a 24 <laughs> just so you know four piece and played the way I play and, and, and felt the way I feel music and it worked out just perfect luckily enough I didn't have to go <laughs> <laughs> you, well actually the fact that you played he played on uh, a song called The Garden of Earthly Delight and I honestly David like you're like a hot pocket you totally brought the Bonham um, because you did this backbeat like this Moby Dick thing that allowed for the guys to be so over the top but gave it such a groove because one of my biggest issues with virtuoso music is that people like shred but like you can't feel it like with that's, David that's playing in the background you could like like, dude, you could be playing Mama Vishnu Orchestra and like fucking basic people could still feel it. <laughs> well, to me, that was the same with the way I approached the Pearl Jam stuff and why I put, you know, splash symbols and all these things into grunge music or whatever. Um, it was that, you know, the problem, I, the problem I had and the thing that I always see when, um, when I see young bands at clubs or whatever is that everyone's kind of playing the same thing and there's no meat there's no ass you know there's just no there's not you know and and yeah that sometimes when the the for lack of a better term guitar hero kind of music that's what i hear is everybody you know like everybody's doing the same thing you know there's a and the drummer's going and the bass player's going it's just like ah. <laughs> yeah. well let me let me ask you both a question what did you do in the trajectory of developing your drum career that that helped you build your own voice because that's it's always interesting to me I mean, especially being a classical musician we spend our lives like practicing music that has already been done and it's really hard to create your own voice so how do you you know if you grow up listening to drummers play and you're learning what they're doing like how did you come up with something new like how did you develop your own voice mushrooms <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say the fucking same thing, Dave. I swear to God. Right there, man. Right there. So that's what I'm missing. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm the odd one out here. Mushroom and then just a weed you're smoking, I guess. Um, no, it was, for me, it, it was, um, wow. You know, it, I still think, I, you know, I feel like I'm still looking for that voice in a way, you know. Um, and even like the last question, what drummers are we listening to now? Um, you know, I'm, I'm mixing, uh, old stuff that I did with Stevie for a new release he's got going. It's my, so, I mean, the drummer I'm listening to most now is me. And it's strange because I'm listening to stuff that I did in 1995. Uh, we recorded, you know, 19 songs in six days. And when the record came out, I didn't even remember playing most of them. You know, it's like, that's what, I didn't even know that song existed. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
but it's still, Sharon Osbourne you know, wants it like that, David. <laughs> well, what do you mean from just learn the overwhelming learning all that material, or just you were high? <laughs> no, no, I never. I, you know, that's the thing. I've never, I've never done the studio high. It's one of those things where it's like uh, I always or play live. You know, it's it's. I'm the guy that, you know, when I, when I fuck up, I, I go to the production office and grab a stack of money and go hand it out in the parking lot. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never got, uh, I can't, I, I smoke pot and I'm an avid, you know, uh, I'm proud of it or whatever. And, but I, I can't smoke pot and play drums in rock. I, I just, I'm like, am I in the second verse? I just, it makes me just lose. I can't, I can't know where I'm at. So, so I never have, you know, like as soon as I get off stage, boom, I fucking get high, but I can't play stone. So that's another thing I'm envious of drummers that can just get baked and then sit there and play like the fucking lost symphony or something. Well, there's actually a scientific thing behind that. If you actually had been high when you were learning drums, then when you actually played drums, you'd be better if you were high than if you were sober, but because you want to play in an alternate state, than how you practice. Therefore, you, you're not going to do it. So what you need to do is start practicing by being really fucking high on your own time <laughs> and, and so, then work up to it. Benny, in all seriousness, so last week, you know, we had a five-day week, Godsmack headquarters here in Florida, right, right in the new record, right? And so what I've been doing is, you know, I wanted to, because when the pandemic hit, you know, and the next thing you know, we're all sitting around and fucking I'm, I'm getting high during the day now because I'm working my yard all day. It's fuck it. You know, everybody's fucking pot. Right? Koi fish and turtles, people. Yeah, right. So fucking. Uh, and so anyway, the, the big machine fires back up. I'm back to work, man. And, and I'm kind of digging it. I'm digging on it. Fuck getting up early again and, you know, getting out, doing my thing. You know what I mean? Going to practice for fucking 10 hours, writing songs. So what I would do is, is, you know, no weed, nothing. And when when we get, because how we do it is we 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 write, like we, uh, it'll start with a riff or whatever or beat, and you know what I mean. And then, oh, you know what if we oh the bridge we need a bridge and blah blah blah. So hours pass, and so anyway, at the end of the day, we try to have like at least this basic structure that we can play and room mics and just record the fucking thing. So we have like a work tape to make our parts later and all that shit. But it takes all day. So my, I don't know, I'm not going to get high all day. All these intricate, you know, it's three, and then four, and then two, you know what I mean? So I don't get high. And then when we get the fucking thing finally recorded and everybody's like, woo, and then we go to the fucking control room, listen to it. All right, we got the work tapes. Good job, guys, or whatever. Then I fucking can get high and reward myself, right? And then so last week, that happened and fucking I, so I get high and we all listen to it. And then Sully said, well, something is just weird and played the demo that he'd written it. And it was literally 15 BPM faster. Right. And the beat, by the way, was do do bat bat do 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 that or do do bat bat do bat Oh, yeah. Do do bat. It was a it was do do bat bat do do do. Right, so it's a little, and it was you know, and it fit the a rhythm. musical tongue twister. So it, was <laughs> it was complicated. Dave knows what I'm doing, man. You know the do do bat, but uh, what is do da and bat? <laughs> the do do is, is the kick is? drum. Do do, right. okay. and, and the bat is the snare. Right. right. So yeah. imagine, you know, I thought pop was how they called coke in the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> so long long story short the motherfucker says it's fucking 50 it's way too i don't want it as fast as this but let's at least bump it back up oh uh, so i'm like oh so now we got to go back in and re-record -re this thing i just got high. he's like oh you know no so i go in I, at first uh, right when he's like all right and I, and to start the song i'm like what's the riff again i, 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 I <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my fucking drum beat. Bat, bat, and doo -doo -boo. What was it? I don't know. Next thing you know, I you know I can't like read and write music, you know. And so I just use like a dot for the kick drum, and then a, a, an X up up high for the snare. So I'm all dot dot X X dot X dot dot dot. <laughs> doo -doo oh, bat, no. bat, 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 doo -doo -doo, you know. <laughs> Short. They're charting it out, trying to read 
fucking chart stone, you know. <laughs> And then Michael Shakner comes in and says, No, it's all wrong. No, it's all wrong. <laughs> oh, so when we went to that show, that club show, Michael Shanker, his son is his tour manager. And so, oh, and, so and some girl or whatever, and I ended up meeting his son saying, Hey man. And he goes, I I I, I even used a Godsmack card, you know. Dave, like when you, you, you don't really want to, but you want to meet Michael Schenker. So you say, Hey, I'm in that band Pearl Jam. You know what I mean? But, uh, <laughs> and so something, you know, so anyway, I did, I, cause I really wanted to meet Michael Schenker, you know, and fucking just like three years ago, I was like, yeah, I'm in that band got smacked. Oh, no shit, man. Let me go tell my old man, you know, fucking dude goes back and he, yeah, Mike, Michael said, wait here. You know, he's coming right out. We said, we stood there for an hour and 15 minutes. Finally, I was like, what this shit, man? I gotta go. I gotta drive home. And shit, man. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> German fucker. Can I tell you, Vinny Paul is another one of my favorite drummers. This happened to me. We went to go see damage plan and he says, Hey, come wait for us. Gives us these after show passes. And then he calls one of my friends, my friend Holly on her cell phone and says like, when we've been waiting for an hour and 10 minutes that he's wasted playing air hockey with like a bunch of strippers over at the Lowell Brewery and that we need to come and drink with them. And like, we're all waiting back. Like, like where the fuck? And like, meanwhile, he's like with a bunch of chicks playing air hockey, like down the straight street drinking already. Fuck it. Yeah. Vinnie Paul. Vinnie Paul. What do you guys think about Vinnie Paul? Well, I mean, I, I can say I, I'm 53. I met Vinnie Paul when I was 16. And, uh, <laughs> And, with, yeah. but, you know, but honestly, you know, Vince was always like, believe it or not, he, he wasn't like the big party guy. He drank like fish and all and party, but he was a chick guy. And so he always would have chicks. So yes, Dime, was. Was, was the, Dime was the dude that, you know, would wanted to party. He wasn't really like me. Like I wasn't like a Mac or whatever. You know, I, I would like to party and get fucking, you know, hang out and do crazy shit, man. But, you know, but so Vince and I, Although I loved him and we were friends, of course, but we're never, we're never close, you know, because he always was gone. Like as soon you'd see him backstage for 15 minutes and then he'd be gone with some chick or three chicks or five <laughs> chicks, whatever. He was that dude. He really was. We, uh, we used to play together and um, back when, when Pantera was a cover band playing Van Halen covers and Dokken covers and rat covers. and <laughs> Yeah, dude. Uh, when, uh, and the other Terry was singing. I remember the first show when uh, uh, the the new guy came in. It was like, you know, let's see, you know, it was a club um, called Matley's Phase Two. It used to be like a Bonanza steak restaurant. They turned it into a club, really small place. And um, <laughs> man, they were loud. But he came out and, and, you know, had blonde hair shaved on the side and it looked like a surfer guy and all this. And then I didn't see those guys um, for a, a number of years and went to the Foundations Forum and Pearl Jam and Soundgarden were playing it. And, uh, and I'm standing there and the, this hotel was packed and all of a sudden it parted like the, you know, the Red Sea and the murmur, Pantera, Pantera, Pantera. And the, the Cowboy Shamel just came out and they walked through and it was like, I'd never seen such a transformation in a group of guys. But... but there was no difference in Vinny. Vinny was still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So true. Was, dude. And, uh, you know, I mean, Dime was, was the same, but Dime was always like two next level for me. He was just, the first time I saw him play, he jumped up on a table playing eruption and the table fell over and he kept playing and I just was blown away. And, um, <laughs> it's so intimidating because I was, I was a little kid sneaking into clubs and, and, Man, that guy was a monster, just a monster. Yeah. Vinny, I always thought Vinny was, was, you know, if somebody asked me you know, to define Vinny in one word, I'd just say loud. Loud. Yeah. Rest in peace, folks. The time that, uh, that I got to play on the Sabbath show one time, they were on OzFest and Pantera was on it. And um, I went out and I got to the pleasure to sit behind Mike Borden playing with Ozzy and Sabbath for six shows before my makeup show. Cause Mike had to go and fly back to faith no more. <laughs> they were starting their tour and Ozzy had 
blown his voice and missed a show and they need a drummer for that makeup show. That's how I got Sabbath. So when I was out there on the OzFest and not only do I get to watch fucking Mike Borden from two feet, like his, I was like his drum tech every night. It was insane. But, and then Vinny Paul during Sabbath takes some chick underneath um, Borden's riser. <laughs> and he had checked, asked Mike Borden, you know, can I, and Mike's like, go if, on stage, Mike's like, go ahead, man. And he fucked, they crawl under and then he bangs his chick underneath his riser while Black Sabbath's on stage. So that's <laughs> fucking, that's a brick wall right there, baby. Oh, wow. man. <laughs> wow. And you, that, there, there's your clip right there, Paza. <laughs> Corey's vigorously taking oh, yeah, notes. He's yeah. taking notes. He's like, where's the timestamp of this one? <laughs> Vinnie Paul fucks chick underneath Puffy. <laughs> During that, the show. That's rock and roll, yeah. dude. This comes back to all, wow. all it started by by um the question of like what you know what helped us define ourselves, like what you know <laughs> as drummers. And, and it's these stories that kind of help along the way too, you know. It, it, for me, you know, back then there were magazines and, and they generated thought and, you know, and whether it was all the way back to when, you know, the, the mystery surrounding Zeppelin and their articles and, um, you know, it, just that time back before the internet, the dark ages, where, sure. where print magazines, you know, would, would, they were really good at, at putting thoughts in your head that would stay there when you were listening to the music. You know, just like album covers, you can do that too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that was part of it for me too as well. It's like chasing that, that mystery factor. Of- okay. So I know, I know you guys are both Zappa fans. Um, I, 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 I just watched the, the documentary myself, Shannon, which you had recommended. I watched it with Paul, our drummer, and I said to this him that I need wow, to show him right? your videos. By the way, I sat, sat him down because he's an old curmudgeon. He's actually only like two or three. He's like, I think... You're about five years older than him. And so so it's not that he doesn't like Godsmack. He doesn't like any m- music from the time period you even exist as far as that stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think he likes Aerosmith past rocks. You know what I mean? So we sat oh, down and I, I showed him all your videos. He was like, oh, hmm. that, guy's, that guy's pretty fucking awesome. And I was going somewhere with this, but I got wicked high. So like I lost my train of thought. I was trying to follow <laughs> your train of thought, but now I'm looking at your fucking eyes and I only see myself in there. What's Some going the on over there, Shannon? You were asking us about Zappa. I think you were heading oh, down. Oh, right. The- okay. Yeah. Bozio <laughs> slash yeah, Bozio or, or, or Kali Yuda. Like, which one are you guys as far as in Bozio. that band? I'm Bozio, man. That baby snake, Frank Zappa, Bozio. <laughs> And, and and David, you is that what he asked? I don't even know. Are you are you a titties and beer guy, or are you like more like Joe's Garage? Jim Gordon. Wow. Yeah. No. No. Jim Gordon's fucking amazing. <laughs> I mean, everyone that's ever played with Zappa was amazing. There's like literally, yeah, you can't name I, someone who wasn't good. That was the whole point of being in Zappa was being ex Frank Zappa was like being the best of anybody. It's the best pedigree in music. Well, so Tinseltown Rebellion. Band. Again, was another. It was a, a record that tested my resolve. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> that was my first exposure to Vinny, and um, wow, you know, I mean, it, the the first time I saw him play live, <laughs> I mean, we had talked on the phone and stuff, which was amazing. What a sweetheart! And I went to a Sting show, and I didn't expect to be as blown away <laughs> as I was. That that was next level. That guy is next level but as far as the zappa the influence um you know i mean chester thompson did some amazing stuff uh, with zappa as well it's, it's it's it'd be hard for me to break it down into one I, I think each each zappa era band you know um excuse me well i kissed this guy except for chad wackerman <laughs> because oh, you know no. i mean chad and and chad's unbelievable but uh, you know Zappa, Cal, Cal left, and John Good, the D, uh, you know the guy who started DW Drums, he was Cal Yuta's tech, and he was he had the amazing ability to make the drums sound the same every night. And Frank loves to edit live drum tracks together, 
And so when Cal Uta left, he wanted to keep John and John left to start DW. So Chad Wackerman got the gig and he made him play Simmons drums. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, God bless <laughs> Chad Wackerman. Oh, man. He pulled it off, but I, it's just that ended it for me as far as, you know, it, that I, I always felt it like Chad would have gotten so much more of his due if he would have been allowed to play real drums when he was in the Zappa band. But Chad, like, to, to adapt, that, that'd be, I don't know. That's hard. Those things don't even feel real, man. They, you know. The old days when they were, when they really didn't feel real. <laughs> you yeah, know, and rubber pads, basically. You're playing a fucking rubber pad. And like the uh, practice pads, you remember the old rubber practice pads? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, that'd be a hard gig. And you're playing Zappa too, and you gotta be flawless too. Yeah, 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 and here, yeah. play these rubber fucking pads <laughs> on top of it. That just sounds like like masochism. Like hurt me? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Frank, Frank did that shit on purpose. Hurt me? No. Hurt yeah. me? No. <laughs> Yeah, that's your question. I'm I'm a fan of all the all of them, but if I had to choose between the two eras, I'd have to go with the Basio era as well. Yeah, titties and beer, titties and beer prevails overall. <laughs> I mean, honestly, come on, how much more fun can you have as a drummer than having Frank Zappa tell you that you, one, you have to play the devil, not very much of a reach or suspension right. of disbelief for either of you, and to fucking talk about titties and beer. But seriously, as the devil, and and if you see Terry Bo Bozio, Bo he was a small, like a very petite guy, but like the voice that he conjured up for that song, that's what won me over. That and the Muffin Man, because I, the first time I heard the Muffin Man, I said to myself, "Is this serious?" But then I went and listened to the rest of the four minutes of the song after Frank spoke, and I said to myself, "This is the most serious ridiculousness I've ever heard in my entire life." Frank does that. Well, what I got out of the baby snakes was uh, was the huge influence stylistically on my drumming from Terry Bozio or Bozio, however he fucking says it. <laughs> he needs to come on the show and like get it right because I, I kept call, we need we to called you Abraziz yeah. Abraziz <laughs> and then he came on. I was like, dude, it's Abraziz. It's that easy. Simple. So maybe Bozio Bozio, like, dude, what the fuck? It's just, yeah. it's, it's, it's Bozio. It, it's yeah. Shannon's playing. Remember? I, I, that, that, uh, you know, the thing about baby snakes when the camera's right over and he's like, he's kind of dancing into the camera and having, I see that in your playing. I, I remember yeah, that. I mean, it, you're very, you were, you know, you were, yeah, you were dancing back there. You know, it was actually, that's one of the things I took from you back way back then was, you know, you got to dance when you play, man, because you made that music move. And back then, you know, everyone was playing this this type of play, but you had a, a feel. You you made <laughs> dance, you know. And, and then when I had the cassette, I got the cassette. But it <laughs> was not child America then at that point, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yep. We were forced yeah. to be. We were forced to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I remember there were half trials in Dallas when I saw you the first time. You know. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's so wild, man. I can't even believe it, Dave. What a small world, man. Well, I'm just I glad that, even... that Dave came out of hiding to watch the episode of 2020 so that he could see us talk about uh, about him with you and then make you the video that everyone that wa is watching this or listening can so hear. Great. Yeah. And now we're all here. Is that not some fucking trippy Kevin Bacon six degree shit? It's so <laughs> awesome, dude. I tell you, it's it's... It's unbelievable. And I've been, <laughs> I've, been, I've been looking forward to it. I swear, Dave, man, I'm not bullshitting. I've been looking forward to this, man. And uh, mm. now I'm, 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 I'm starting. Well, how long has it been? Jesus, I'm starting. Coming up on an hour. <laughs> yeah. Starting to, starting to get warm. <laughs> In a good way, though, man, tell, tell, tell the listeners what you're, what you're feeling so they can know. Yeah. <laughs> You have to enlighten me because apparently this is how I'm going to get better at writing music. So <laughs> Dude, I need to learn like all the benefits Hunter of this. Thompson there, David Abruzzi's. Everyone needs to tune into two zero two zero dash d dot com and look at the maniacal look on fucking David Abruzzi's just <laughs> laughing at Shannon Larkin. It's priceless. <laughs> oh my god, man! I love I love you, Shannon. I love I love you, and I appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, everyone, <laughs> YouTube, find this video if you're not watching it. <laughs> it's oh my god. So I, yeah, I've kind of been this invisible uh, kid in, in school that just, you know, not popular, um, just not, you know, not, nobody you would you would notice, especially. And then suddenly I'm in this band, and then once the record starts selling, people are familiar with the band. Well, I, w I was never like, uh, you know, tabloid level famous or anything, mm -hmm. but enough so that we could do these tours and, uh, you know, you get a lot of the attention all of a sudden. And then, you know, you're in this town and and you're, you know, around the venue, all the, the bars and maybe record stores around the, you know, there's people that are going to your concert. And suddenly, you know, they recognize you and they want to, and it's just, it's very strange. It's very strange to, to get used to it.